Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Troy with Sickwood Bros. In today's video, we are making huge progress on my big plywood aquarium. We may even get it completely finished and ready to fill up with water. We'll see how far along we get. We're gonna be doing all the plumbing, adding external braces. We're gonna be finishing the pond shield to make sure this thing is completely waterproof. And we're even gonna be installing a glass. If that is delivered in time, we will see. It's gonna be a jam-packed video, so let's get right into it. So this is part four in a series of building this 475 gallon plywood aquarium. In part one, we built the tank stand. In part two, we built the actual shell of the aquarium out of plywood. In part three, we added the internal bracing, got started on the waterproofing by fiberglass and pond shield. And now we're really gonna start making it look like a real aquarium here very soon. But just wanted to reiterate that this is not a how-to series. This is my first time building a plywood tank. And as always, go check out some of the more experienced YouTubers out there like Joey, the King of DIY, or Aquarium Domain. Both of those were huge influences on my tank build. Definitely a better step-by-step -step guide and helped me out a lot with this build. So big props to those guys, thanks again. So the first thing we need to do is talk about the plumbing because that's gonna impact a lot of what we do with the bracing and the rest of the aquarium throughout the video. If you remember, I planned on using the custom aquarium seamless sump under this tank. I had this sump ready with the two filter socks, the baffle for the return pumps, and also the water reservoir, but I actually made the tank a little bit bigger than I originally planned to, and that's when I started talking to custom aquariums about potentially replacing the two filter sock with the four filter sock. And that's really going to increase not only the volume of the sump, but also the amount of filtration I'm gonna have on this big 475 gallon aquarium. Let's check it out and then we'll see what we're gonna be doing to the tank. Okay, so first off here is we have the overflow tubing. We have two of them here. And I actually got two that is 58 inches long and two that is 68 inches long, which should fit into this filter tub really nicely and up to the aquarium with the H2O overflow, which I'll also pull out of this box here in a second. I also have the return tubing here, and I believe this is three quarter inch tubing, which will go to the two returns. So first off, this is the H2O overflow system, which will connect to bulkheads that I'll have to install on the tank and screw holes for. And then the drain lines will simply connect and go downwards from the tank. So we'll show a mock-up of this on the tank in just a second. Now I have two of these siphon stopper return lines which will also connect to bulkheads so I'll have to drill smaller holes into the tank for these smaller bulkheads and then the return lines will simply come up that way through the back of the tank. And then last but not least here's the big filter tub with the four filter socks. It has more volume and it has four filter socks, so that will be perfect for what I need here. We'll get this under the tank in just a second. Got two siphon stoppers, four bulkheads for the overflows, and the four H2O overflows. Okay, so we just removed this two filter sock tub and replaced it with the four filter sock tub. And that's something that's awesome about the seamless sump is that you can mix and match all these different baffles and filter tubs to provide as much filtration as you need. And you can see it's really easy to change out. The new filter sock tub, along with the extra volume, has four different drain lines and filter socks already installed, so this will provide a ton of filtration. So I'm very excited, and as you can see, this fits perfectly under my stand here, kind of maxing out the filtration that I could have while still having this awesome seamless sump. So now that the sump is in place, it is time to dry fit and measure where the overflows and the return lines are gonna be, so let's do that next.
Looks good, one hole is down. Okay, so I'm just gonna put in the bulkhead to test fit it. So far, it looks good. All right, beautiful. Let's see if the H2 overflow is correct. Should go right here, and it would sit just like that, which is, you know, just over the brim here, so it's perfect for the water line. So we'll have three of them sideways and one of them out like that. It will be a, a lot of surface skimming from these guys and a lot of filtration. Okay, so all of the holes have been drilled and it went really smoothly. Very happy with this. The bulkheads are just in there temporarily dry fitted. I'm gonna take those out before I do the next few coats of Pond Shield. But you have the four overflows on the left and then over on the right, I have the siphon stoppers. These are the returns and you can kind of see one will push water across the back of the tank. One will push the water left, but more towards the middle. And I really like that setup. I think they'll definitely be out of view, especially how I'm gonna set up the lights. And these will also be out of view because the lights will not be directly on them. So really excited about this. This was really the last step that I was worried about, just drilling into the tank and ruining any of my work before. So now I can get to the next few steps, which is my next few coats of Pond Shield. I'll have to sand between each of those but also on the external bracing. And I wanted these holes and bulkheads in here dry fitted first because I wanted to dry fit my framing as well. So just being able to see that the two by fours can go around them and between them. Basically I'm gonna do two by four on the top, across and on the bottom. So I'm gonna do that for this side and all the way around. Let's get to cutting. So now all of the external bracing is complete. It is all screwed and glued to the tank. Let's go around to check it out. This is the left side of the tank and I have all the bracing, including the top brace here. And these are just dry fit, the bulkheads. I'm gonna take those out for the next coat of Pond Shield, which will be the next step. But everything is looking really good and secure. I also have this two by six up here, which is dry fit right now, so I'll have four or five front to back braces that I'll add later on. I'll be adding pond shield coats to the top braces separately and then screwing them on last as I might need access to the tank inside when I'm installing the glass and with aquascaping and things like that. So the external braces are complete except for the top. And then if you go around to the back, it's the same deal. We have all the braces, two by fours going all the way down across and on the back side. So all of this is screwed and glued together. Really sturdy now. And if you go around to the side here, same deal. And on this side, you can see the return bulkheads. I'm gonna remove these as well for the next coat of pond shield. So let's get to that now. So if you're wondering why you have to sand between coats, there are a couple reasons. The first is to smooth down any imperfections from the previous coat. And as more coats are added, there's less and less unevenness because the pond shield is self-leveling. But also when you sand it down, it gives the next coat something to grip onto and it makes the coat just that much more effective. So it's a painful process. I really don't like sanding, but it's definitely a necessary evil. So we have a prepped surface now. We have sanded it down. You might be able to see a little bit of the scuffed up white and that will look much better once we get the next coat of paint, obviously. But everything is sanded down, wiped down, and ready to go for Pond Shield. So let's get to it. There are little things throughout this process that you pick up on, just little tips. One of them is that getting this off of the can is like impossible and it kills your fingers. But if you look, you can usually see one area where it's a little bit lifted off the lid and then pops right off. There's always an easy way. So 
So the latest coat of Pond Shield is now cured and this is looking amazing. I definitely think this would hold water if I had the glass panel in place, but I am not gonna slack on the Pond Shield. I'm gonna go through the sanding again and I'm gonna add another coat of Pond Shield. We're gonna do that now. And then I did just get an update that the glass is coming. So we're gonna see if I can get that before the end of the video. So it is recommended to sand between coats upon shield. You can get around this by doing it a bit quicker after you put on the coat. So if it's just tacky, but not coming up on your fingers, you can maybe avoid the sanding part, but I let it cure for a little over a day. So it's definitely needing a sanding, unfortunately. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm not gonna bore you with the whole process again. We'll probably speed through it, but let's go. Okay, so it is the next day and this coat of Pond Shield is now dry. It's looking great. It's making it really look like the aquarium is coming together nicely. I did a little bit of Pond Shield also into the holes here that I drilled because bulkheads do tend to leak sometimes. So if that were to happen, hopefully it won't. But if it were to happen, the Pond Shield in the actual holes will help with that. So I did that in the returns as well over there. Um, but I also dry fitted the two by sixes up there. I have a coat of pond shield on the bottom, but we'll add additional layers to the top. And I will also get those center braces probably in the next video as well. So I definitely want to go overkill with the pond shield and do at least one more coat, maybe even two. And each time I do a coat, it's about 24 hours to let the curing process happen. But once the pond shield is absolutely complete, a lot of steps will all happen back to back. And let me explain. And a huge step is when that final coat of pond shield is complete. I can sand down the inside of the window frame and install the glass. And here is the glass. It did get installed, so I'm really excited about this. It is 72 inches by 30 inches tall, and it is half inch tempered glass. And this just came in, like I said, the pond shield needs to dry for the next coat or two, and then we'll be installing this. So it'll be happening probably by the time I post this video, this will be installed. I'll be showing it in the next video, so stay tuned. And we also got the pump in for the plumbing. So along with the glass install, we'll be adding the pump to the sump underneath the tank. We'll be installing all the plumbing, gluing it into place, and it's all gonna come together. Super excited for this. I've had multiple versions of the Synchro SDC on my other two tanks with sumps, but this is the biggest version, and I can't wait to get it installed. So here's the tank as it is right now. As you can see, the framing around the outside makes it really look like a big tank. And you can also see in the tank stand, I added a few more supports and L brackets. So it's really looking sturdy and I really like the extra supports I did. And I went overkill with the L brackets. I have them all over the tank stand, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. And another question I keep getting is about where the tank is. And of course, I'm not gonna be keeping it in the middle of the room. I'm gonna be moving it to the back corner and it won't be blocking a fuse box or much of the window. I just need to install the glass and glue in the plumbing on the right side before it completely goes into the back right. So we made huge progress on this tank build, but we will have even bigger steps completed in the next video with the glass, the plumbing, moving it into place, and maybe even starting the leak test, which hopefully goes smoothly with this big old tank. But I'm really excited to show the progress and updates on this tank. And if you'd like to see the completed build or the next few steps of this tank, definitely consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.